and then we have um, another strand sugar and the phosphate sugar and phosphate always and this will be uh, here th there will be a, a T over here a thymine because adenine always pairs up with thymine and there will be a C over here because guanine always pairs up with cytosine and there, there will be hydrogen bonds between them that will hold these strands together now during the replication of DNA like when we want to make copies of the DNA what happens is that first the hydrogen bonds break first the hydrogen bonds break there, there are in the in the body there are enzymes that can that, that break these hydrogen bonds so these hydrogen bonds break and when they break we are left with the individual dna molecules not molecule individual dna strands we are left with the individual strands as you can see uh, not here let's make it like yeah so now they are no longer hydrogen bonded to each other because they have been separated the hydrogen bonds have been broken so now on our top strand we had adenine here and guanine here as you can see in the original diagram and in the bottom now that they are no longer we can take this as as the strand no not C sorry I made a mistake this should be T because this was initially paired up with T the A was initially paired up with T. Obviously, it will, the A will always be paired up with T. And the G was paired up with the C. So now we have two individual strands. No longer hydrogen bonding. Uh, hydrogen no longer, uh, no longer is there any hydrogen bonding between them. So now what happens is that a new strand comes in for both. So a new strand comes in. Like one, a new strand for this one and a new strand for the other one. So a new strand has come and we have the T over here because A will always pair up with T, hydrogen bonds between them. We have the C over here because G will always pair up with C because and hydrogen bonds between them. And similarly a new strand comes over here, sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate don't but don't write sugar write deoxyribose which is the name of the sugar so this will be a because t will always pair up with a as you know and this will be g because c will always pair up with g a t g c so these two will pair up now now you can see that from the initial one dna molecule this was our one dna molecule so this entire thing was one DNA molecule. Now we have two new DNA molecules. So the DNA has been replicated. So this is this process is known as semi-conservative replication of DNA. Because now we have two. We have a copy. We have two copies of the DNA molecule, of the original DNA molecule. So this is known as semi-conservative replication. Now polyesters, so uh, we are done with everything about proteins and DNA, so now let's do polyesters. So as I told you, polyesters are polymers which, have, which are linked together by ester groups. We have done that example when I was talking about condensation polymerization. And uh, an example of polyesters is terylene. Um, it's also used in clothing. So remember these examples for, poly for polyamides. The example was nylon and Kev the examples were nylon and Kevlar for polyesters. You remember the example terylene. Now let's move forward. So non-solvent based adhesives. So adhesives are basically some uh, what you use to stick things together. Like glue is an adhesive. So adhesives are what you use to stick things together. Now the problem with traditional adhesives was that first they use a very um, a very toxic solvent so there were there were many environmental problems and problems for humans as well so the uh, and the second thing was that they were they were not uh, very like efficient in sticking things together so then non-solvent based adhesives were made so there is a polymer so in 
in what happens in the no, in the case of a non-solvent based adhesive, there is a polymer chain. Okay.